I'm building an ultra-realistic highway for the North Texas scene on my layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and today I'm working on the North Texas scene on the upper deck of the new addition to my layout. And for that scene, I need a two-lane country highway. Well, in this video, I'm going to be building that highway, and I'm going to be using some techniques that I have never demonstrated on this channel before that I think you will find really useful and helpful for building model highways for your own layout. So be sure to stay tuned. Now, if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. But for now, let's go build a highway. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. I started this highway project by mocking up the highway width and placement with just plain pieces of paper. Note how the road tapers to a point in the distance around that small hill to create the illusion of distance as it disappears out of sight. I taped the various pieces together to make a single paper template that would work as one continuous mock-up, and then I took it to the workbench. I'm using large format styrene that's 40 thousandths of an inch thick in sheets that are 12 inches by 18 inches in size. Even with this size of styrene, it took three pieces to build the entire road. I laid the paper out in ways that seemed to make the best use of the styrene and taped it to the styrene. And I cut the paper mock-up at the edge of the styrene to line up the next section. I made a square cut to save the excess styrene for another project. I installed a new, sharp number 11 blade in my hobby knife for cutting these road sections. A great safety tip is to drop old blades into a water bottle or a soda bottle before dropping them in the trash so no one will get cut or hurt. I scored all of the road sections with the sharp side of the blade first to make their shape. I removed the paper template after marking each section. After the section was marked, I used the back side of the point of the blade to further score the lines. This removes material rather than just cutting through it, making cutting through the material faster, and it really helps when cutting these slight curves like these road edges. After scoring each line a few times, I simply snap them apart. I used 220 grit sandpaper and a coarse sanding stick to smooth out the edges and perfect the curve where the road butts up against the track. I worked to make the joint where the sections would come together as perfect as a match as I possibly could. When I was pretty happy with the shape and the edges of the sections, I again used 220 grit sandpaper to lightly sand and roughen the top surface of the styrene. This gives the otherwise slick styrene some tooth, which helps the other materials to stick to it better. For the next steps, I covered my work surface with some waxed paper, which helps to avoid things adhering to my work surface. I taped the waxed paper down at the corner with some painter's tape. To provide a suitable texture for the road, I used Golden Brand Fine Pumice Gel. I've been learning a lot about the use of various artist media for modeling purposes from a various sources over the past couple years, but most recently from Boomer Dioramas here on YouTube. This particular medium I learned about from him, and it works great for N-scale or HO-scale road texture. If you'd like to try it out, I'll put a link to it in my Amazon Pick of the Week in the description down below. I applied the media to the road surface with an artist's trowel, but if you don't have one, you don't have to purchase one. You can simply use a scrap of styrene, which will work just as well. I applied a thin layer to the entire section of the roadway, and I experimented with this process on some scrap styrene, applying it only with the trowel. The problem was this left stripes of thicker media, and when it dried hard, sanding it smooth proved to be very difficult without completely sanding away the media in the thinner sections. 
So instead, I used a wide scrap of styrene with a straight, smooth edge as a finishing trowel to level the media across the entire length of each road section. The goal was to make one pass which left the surface as smooth as possible without overworking the product. In the end, this worked very well, and I repeated the process on each of the three sections. I let the media dry overnight, and then I used my hobby knife to remove any excess that remained along the edges of the road. I then used a solvent cement and a couple scraps of 10 thousandths thick styrene to cement the joints together. In retrospect, this probably would have been better to do before applying the gel media, but I didn't have the work surface large enough to apply and smooth the gel on the entire piece. Just take great care when cementing the pieces together not to over apply the solvent and thus mar the pumice gel or the other surfaces of your model. I then lightly sanded the entire top surface with 600 grit sandpaper to ensure a consistent surface. I painted the road initially with Vallejo model color dark sea gray. This provided a good base color from which to work as I weathered the road. An airbrush would certainly have worked well for this, but I simply brushed the paint on using strokes that went long ways down the highway. When the paint was dry to the touch, I touched up any areas where the paint seemed to be thin, light, or where there were excessive brush strokes. I then let the paint cure for 24 hours. I had decided to hand paint the road stripes, which meant that I needed to mask them off. The cutting tape for a project like this is tedious work and can be a daunting task, and painter's tape often removes the paint that is below it. So I had purchased some pre-cut artist's masking tape. The package I purchased came with widths of 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 4th, and 1 half of an inch. I found that this tape worked amazingly well, as I had virtually no bleed under the tape, and it removed none of the paint that was below it. I'll provide a link to it in the Amazon pick of the week in the description below as well if you'd like to check it out. I started by marking the center of the road and applying a 1 16th inch strip exactly down the middle between the solid stripes. I then used the half inch tape to mask the outside of the solid yellow stripes. I didn't measure but rather eyeballed the widths of these stripes. They came out a little bit wide but overall I think they look pretty good as I think you will see. Finally, I used another strip of half-inch tape to mask the white lines, which I painted right to the edge of the styrene. With the masking in place, I painted the yellow lines with Tamiya XF3 flat yellow paint. This paint has nice coverage, and the color seems perfect to my eye for highway striping. But since I was painting over the darker gray paint, I ended up applying a second coat as soon as the first had dried to the touch. I painted the white lines with Vallejo model color white, also applying a second coat of this paint. As soon as all of this paint had dried to the touch, I carefully removed the masking tape. Again, I was very happy to see that there was very little bleed under the tape and that none of the gray paint lifted off of the surface of the road. I used the original gray color to touch up the few places where the white or yellow paint had bled under the tape. The end of the road section is at a grade crossing, so I used microscale decals for the roadway cross buck and stripes. I carefully cut these details out on a plate glass with a new sharp number 11 blade. I laid them on the road to find the location where I wanted the decals, then soaked them in water one at a time for application. I applied some microscale micro set to the road surface where the decals would go, then carefully slid the decals off of the backing paper and onto the roadway with the micro set. I used a soft brush to position them. The larger decal was quite wrinkled due to having too much microset under it, 
So I used that soft brush to work the liquid out from the center of the decal toward all of the edges until most of the wrinkles had disappeared. Again, I let the decals dry completely before moving on to the weathering step. The goal in weathering is to lighten the color of the tracks and slightly darken the center of each lane. To do this, I started with Monroe Models weathering powders. I used chalky white for the tracks and medium gray for the center. I used a model truck to help me keep the strokes of my weathering properly aligned. As I worked, it became quickly apparent that the Monroe Models white was not lightening the roadway. So, I tried Pan Pastel's white with a burnt umber tint, which worked much better. I applied the powders with a micro brush applicator brush and feathered them out along the edges as well as I could. I also applied the gray between the tracks as I went and tried to feather all of these together and blend them as much as possible. I looked at the roadway under the layout lighting and thought that the weathering looked a little bit stark and needed some blending and toning down. So I took it back to the work pinch and applied a coat of acrylic flat clear with an airbrush, knowing that it would tone down the pan pastels, and it certainly did. The final step was to apply some repair cracks. I attempted to do this with a super fine Sharpie but it wouldn't really mark on this roadway, so I switched to a finely sharpened black colored pencil, which worked much better. I was careful not to overdo these marks. A little bit goes a long way. I used my reference photo that I've been using for this entire scene as a guide for these marks. And with that, my road was done. I didn't glue the road down to the scene yet because I'm not quite sure how the next steps in creating the scenery are going to go, but here you can get a sense of how it's going to look. I'm very pleased with how the road turned out and I can't wait to get the scenery in around it and complete this scene. The fine pumice gel created a fantastic texture that is realistic even in N-scale. And I know that the camera didn't really do that justice. You've got to put some real eyes on this stuff, but I'm telling you, it really, really comes out with a great texture for a modern highway. The weathering, I think, came out looking very realistic as well, and I couldn't be happier with these techniques as I used them on this particular highway on this scene for my layout. Now, don't forget that you can find a link to the fine pumice gel as well as that artist's masking tape in the description down below in my Amazon Pick of the Week. Also, be sure and check out my Micromark promo code. It'll save you 10% and all the other great links that are there while you're down there. Now, if you'd like to see more about how I build realistic highways and bridges, be sure to check out the links on your screen and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great model railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you. Then. Ten, Lizzie?